guys, we have to talk about not one, not two, but three amazing tools that you have to be using to grow your stream. Today, I'm gonna to be covering the brand new follower and subs widget that Twitch has just introduced and how insanely overpowered they are. But I'm also gonna be talking about the brand new ads manager they've just released and how it can actually help you increase your brand new chatters and brand new viewers by potentially 46%. And I'm also going to be covering my secret weapon that I use to make my stream more discoverable that literally any person on Twitch can use. And yes, that includes non-affiliates. Let's go. Hey, I'm LJ from streamscheme.com. I'm also a variety streamer over at twitch.tv slash LJM underscore. I am incredibly keen to cover the features that I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Specifically, I'm excited to shed a lot of light on ads that I think a lot of small streamers don't understand and have some serious misconceptions about. And if you don't take action after hearing a bunch of the information in today's video, then you might be capping your growth by an extreme amount. There are time codes in the description so you can skip ahead to whatever part of this video you want. But first, something that won't be capping your growth our sponsor, Own.TV. I feel like one of the biggest problems new streamers have is hardware limitations. They just can't stream and play games and have a full overlay as well. That's why Owned are absolutely fantastic because not only do they have static as well as animated overlays, but they've also got completely modular overlays meaning that if your PC can't even handle a few static assets, you can pick and choose exactly what you want rather than be forced to use the entire pack. Heck, if you just want alerts, you don't even have to buy a full pack. You can just grab the alerts. Seriously, guys, if you're looking to upgrade your stream, look no further than Owned.TV. And you can use the link in the description as well to support us and this channel. Without Owned, we couldn't keep making these videos, so I really appreciate it. Okay, let's start with the brand new follower goals and sub goal widgets that have been absolutely blowing up my stream over the past few weeks. Follower goals and sub goals. We've all seen them on streams. They are a great way when used right to boost your followers and your subscribers. Because at the end of the day, sometimes all it takes for someone to follow or subscribe is to be reminded that they can actually do that. This is called a call to action or CTA. But this feature takes it a whole step further than your classic on-screen goals, which I'll cover in a second. First, let's show you how to actually set up the goal inside Twitch. I want you to head to your stream dashboard and I want you to go over to the right where you can see your quick action buttons. And I want you to click on the plus sign button. I want you to search up goals and I want you to click add it to your buttons. Next, click on the goals button and you'll be met with the ability to start a goal. You can select goal type, so subscription or follower goal. You can set a description for what the goal's aim is. For example, reach affiliate 50 followers and you can edit the overall goal you're aiming for. Once that is done, you can click start goal and it will actually run across the top of your chat, much like a community challenge points or like a hype train. If you were to reach your goal, then much like a hype train, it would scroll across the top of the stream saying you reached a goal and you can celebrate as a full community and full chat as well, which is honestly awesome. Once active, if someone subscribes or follows, it'll run past the top of chat again, telling everyone the progress of the goal. But the part that I think is much more powerful is how it actually appears in the Twitch chat, not just at the top of the Twitch chat. Let's use subs as an example. If someone were to subscribe or gift subscriptions while you had a goal active, then it would actually appear next to that person's name for the entire chat to see. You can actually see the full progress there as well. That means the entire chat can see that Bootyman69 with two Ys was the 456th sub out of 460 sub goal, and they're only four subs away from reaching the goal. You can also add your goal directly into your OBS or Streamlabs OBS to appear on screen using the browser source that Twitch provides you. That said, you don't really have to though. The most powerful part of this, as I said, is how it appears in chat because it doesn't take up any screen. It doesn't block any content. It is non-intrusive, but still prominent enough to remind people. When it comes up saying there's only four subs left after Bootyman69 gifted, that is a big incentive and a big reminder to show everyone, hey, we're really close to that goal. If I want to help, I can, and I might be the one to push us over that goal. You can see now why I say this is a very powerful CTA or call to action with very little downsides. Speaking of downsides, let's quickly weigh up some pros and cons of this tool before we get into the ads manager and my secret weapon to making my content more discoverable. Because this is directly through Twitch and they are doing total subs or total followers out of total goal, it means that if someone were to unfollow or unsubscribe, then this will be updated instantly to remove that person who unfollowed or unsubscribed. And I know that sounds bad, but this is actually fantastic because with most widgets such as Stream Elements or Streamlabs follower goals, they're going to have to be updated every single stream or even sometimes halfway through the stream. 
because people unfollow and they're just counting how many follows you get rather than going off the total number you have. These new Twitch goals don't go out of sync like that. The second pro I want to shout out is the fact that this is available to literally everyone, which means if you're not an affiliate, you can set up a follower goal for zero to 50. And I think that is brilliant that Twitch made this available to the entire platform. But there are cons though, this isn't the absolute perfect tool. The first con would be that there is very little customization. Everything I've shown you is all the customization you can do currently on these goals. This means that if you do want to include the bar on your screen, then you better like pink because that's all you're getting. I would like to see some basic customization, maybe so that the bar isn't always pink or the icon isn't always that. If we had a little bit more control, I would love this. The second con is I really don't like how they made it so the browser source, the thing you add the widget to your OBS or slobs with, is just your channel username. The reason I don't like this is because it feels weird to think that bootyman69 with two Y's could add my sub goal widget to his OBS very easily. And I can add anyone else's to mine as long as it's running. I don't know why you would, but a lot of people are weird and I feel like it's probably going to happen. So I'd like to set a custom code, but again, it's not a big deal. And drum roll please for the absolute biggest con. I can't run a follower goal and a sub goal at the exact same time. Please Twitch, add this feature. I wanna be able to aim for 25,000 followers while also aiming for my daily sub goal. The fact that I can't run both feels really limited. I just love to see this added, please. That's really it though. At its core, this tool is optional and you don't have to use it. But if you choose to use it and you use it correctly, it can go a long way to increasing your overall growth. It won't work like this for every single community, but personally for me, I've seen some massive growth with this tool. Normally I average between 300 to 350 subs per month. However, since I've started adding sub goals using this tool, I have ballooned to a massive 600 average subs with only 150 average viewers which is absolutely immense. Every time I set a sub goal, people go, oh, I can reach that. That's only five, 10 subs away. And they just instantly start subscribing or gifting, which is incredibly generous and insane to me. So I'm going to show you the brand new ads manager tool that you can use to turn off pre-roll ads without even having to worry or think about it. So that when new viewers click on your stream, they don't get a pre-roll and then leave before even seeing your content, which yes, absolutely happens. And I'll show you more info on that soon as well as my secret weapon to making more discoverable content. But first, I want to throw it out there, guys. If this video helps you out at all, please consider subscribing to the channel. Honestly, it means a lot. We're so close to 100,000. Liking and subscribing are free, of course, as well. And you can always undo it. But please don't undo it. <laughs> So what is my secret weapon when it comes to making my channel and my content more discoverable? Well, if you have ever been to your stream dashboard, then you have absolutely seen this tool and you've completely ignored it most likely. A tool that I recommend to every single streamer and that you should absolutely be using is the marker tool and the clip that tool. These are both quick action buttons and they are so powerful when used correctly. One of the hardest parts of being a small streamer is finding the best bits of your streams to turn into content on other platforms so you can be more discoverable. So you're live and you're having an awesome stream and you do something absolutely hilarious or you do something absolutely downright awesome. All you have to do is click that marker button or clip it and essentially keep streaming. When you're done, you can come back to your VOD and you can go into your highlighter and then find every single clip and marker that you put in. You can then highlight these and download them or simply download the clips you've made and bam, you've got all of the best parts of your stream. I started doing this because I watched an interview with Dunkey where he talked about his process for creating videos. And in it, he talked about how whenever he was recording for a video, he would always have a button set up that ended the recording and then started the recording again. Every time something happened that was good for a video, he would press that button and it would stop recording and start again. Then in the editing process, all he would have to do is go to every single clip he had and skip right to the end and he'd instantly find the best bit. This is the same concept. You've got a huge list of highlighted best bits from your stream now. You can go in and download them and then edit them for other platforms such as YouTube Shorts, TikToks, or any other social media you want. I've actually been doing this exact process recently so that I can test out YouTube Shorts and TikToks, which I guess I can actually officially announce to you guys now. I have a second channel just for YouTube Shorts. There's gonna be longer stuff on there soon, but I wanted to quietly without telling you, test out YouTube Shorts and see how it goes for growth. And it's been really interesting and I have a whole video coming on that soon. So if you can't watch me live and you wanna support me or you just wanna see some examples of YouTube Shorts, you should go check out my second channel. It's a damn good time if I do say so myself. 
Quick note as well, if you have a Stream Deck, don't forget to install the Twitch plugin and set up these as both a marker and a clip button on your Stream Deck. That way you don't have to alt tab out. You can literally just press a button on your Stream Deck and you're good to go. Okay, it is time for the most important part of the video. We have to talk about Twitch ads. First, let me explain for those who don't know the major problem with Twitch ads and how it is hurting so many streamers. If you are a Twitch affiliate or higher, then you might be losing a huge number of potential new viewers and new chatters because of pre-roll ads. And because of this downside, I get asked constantly if Twitch affiliate or Twitch partner even is actually worth it when it has such a huge effect on new viewers coming in. Devin Nash, our stream and marketing angel, as well as my personal hero, has actually said that one in three viewers who get a pre-roll ad will click off before they even see you, your stream, or your content. Now, I apologize if that number is out of date or incorrect. I believe right now, as of saying this, that is what he said. That said, on our end, when we poll our audience of small streamers, it often comes back to be about 50-50 on whether or not they will leave a stream before they even see the content because of pre-roll ads. The exact numbers are on screen now and you can see it's from our latest poll. This is still up if you want to go and vote and also join in on the discussion. So 50-50 is pretty rough on whether or not someone will actually see your content, but it's way worse when you realize that our audience who voted in this poll are small streamers. Small streamers who are more willing to put up with negative viewing experiences. Small streamers who are okay with bad microphones, who are okay with laggy streams, who are okay with ads because they want to support other creators because they hope that others would put up with it to support them. Then it becomes a much more difficult situation when you realize that viewers aren't as willing to put up with ads and aren't as willing to put up with negative viewing experiences. You don't have to like this. Every time we talk about this on this channel, in the Discord or wherever, I have a lot of small streamers getting defensive and even angry at the fact that people don't want to watch pre-rolls. They don't want to put up with 30 seconds or 90 seconds of ads just to support a streamer. And that's fine. You can be angry at the masses, but you can't change the masses and we have to accept this is a problem. So how do we deal with the problem? So do we just not accept affiliate and become multi-streamers? Well, yeah, there are really big plus sides to doing that if you do it correctly. Or do we just leave Twitch entirely and become YouTube streamers? Well, there are also reasons to do that. But that doesn't help solve the problem of the people who want to stream on Twitch and our affiliates who have to deal with with this situation. So what was the old solution? Well, it was to manually run our own mid-roll ads because it turns off pre-rolls for new viewers for a certain amount of time. Who got an ad when they joined the stream? Can I ask? I'm doing some research, doing some research. Has anyone here had an ad so far today? <gasps> ad free, not me, no ads, no ads, zero ads, no ads, none. Nope, not me, I didn't, oddly not this time. It's not odd, it's not odd, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome, all right, you know why? I remembered to run my own ads at the start of the stream, so they've been off for the last 20 minutes. We would do this in the same place as the rest of our quick action buttons. All you have to do is go into your stream dashboard and click the run an ad button. Now quickly, I have to cover another misconception that small streamers have been commenting on these polls about ads. And that is the fact that they think that these ads are going to make them money or that Twitch in general is a better way to monetize and make revenue than other platforms. Honestly, this topic is an entire video, so comment below if you want me to break that down. But for now, the reality is, is that running an ad won't make you any money unless you are XQC, Ludwig, or even Pokimane sizes. That is the only time you'll make money from these ads. But if you're a Twitch affiliate, you should still be running your own mid-rolls in order to turn ads off for other viewers. For example, if I run 90 seconds of ads, this is usually three ads back to back, it'll turn off pre-rolls for new viewers for 30 to 35 minutes. I'll give you more examples of that in a second. Now, I don't recommend running another 90 seconds exactly 30 to 35 minutes later. Don't just pump these out on repeat over and over again. I only run ads at the very start of my stream, during bathroom breaks, water breaks, or just generally during big content breaks. Before I run them, I always say the same thing. Hey, I'm going to run an ad. I'm not doing it to make money. I'm doing it because it turns off ads for new viewers. And overall, we will have less ads in the stream if I do it myself. You won't miss anything. It's just a BRI back screen or it's just a loading queue. So I apologize. I also have my stream decks up with a multi-action button so that when I press it, it runs the 90 seconds. And it also posts in my chat the exact same apology and explanation for everyone who didn't hear it. Because of this process that I do with my ads, I rarely see a dip in my viewership when I run a mid-roll. But I will always see 
an increase in new chatters and new followers in the 35 minutes that follow me running the ad with the pre-rolls being turned off because there is less barriers for these people to join my stream and see my content. That said, I can't promise that you won't lose a small number of viewers when you roll a mid-roll ad. It's entirely up to you and your content. So you need to learn to balance out how many to run, when to run them, and how it affects your stream. The reality is for the majority of people who have real discovery backing them, running these ads opens you up to get more and more people coming in with very little downside. And with all that context explained, now we have to talk about the fantastic new ads manager that'll allow you to set and forget to keep pre-rolls turned off with ease and also give you much more control as a creator over your ads because before then, those buttons were all we could do. So first we have to find out if you've got it. They're rolling it out slowly, so don't stress if it isn't there for you. But first, head to your creator dashboard, go to the affiliate button, click on that, or for me, it says partner. And then I want you to scroll right down to the bottom where it says ads manager. But before you click on it, please make sure you've got this little button here turned on, the disable pre-roll ads when you run your own. If you don't have that on, all of this is useless. Once that is on, click on the ad manager and you can start customizing as you see fit. Here you can schedule your ad spacing, meaning how often ads play. You can change the ad length. So for example, 30 seconds is only one ad and that turns pre-rolls off for 10 minutes. Or as I said, you can set it to 90 seconds or three ads, which is 30 to 35 minutes. These two new tools need to be balanced very carefully. Personally, I am setting mine to 60 to 90 seconds worth of ads every 45 minutes to an hour. But find what works for you and your community. Please don't just cookie cutter what my community are okay with. As I said, mine are mostly small streamers and they're more open to putting up with negative experiences like ads. Next up, you can set a delay. Now this is really important to set this as short as possible because you want pre-rolls to run literally at the very start of your stream because it takes a little while for people to filter in. This means get your pre-rolls turned off as soon as possible. So when your followers who aren't subbed click that go live notification, they don't get an ad. This is Future LJ with a small life hack. Last night out of habit, I ran 90 seconds worth of ads at the very, very start of my stream. One minute in, the ads manager ran my scheduled ads and both of those stacked giving me 65 minutes of no pre-rolls on my stream. All it cost me was to run two sets of ads for about 15 people at the very start of my stream who were all subscribers, so they didn't see them anyway. Thanks Twitch. That's, I'm sure that's working as intended. But you might be thinking, this sucks. What if it runs an ad automatically during a massive climax of a story or during a really awesome moment of a stream? Maybe I'm top two in my Fortnite Battle Royale and it runs 90 seconds of ads because it's scheduled. Or maybe you're thinking, great, so now I have to be more regimented with my breaks every hour getting up to go to the toilet. This sucks. Well, no, they've actually come up with features to help you deal with that. And it's also made it pretty much impossible for you to accidentally run an ad during a climax or a hype moment. And that is where the heads up timer, which you can see right here, comes into play. The heads up timer will warn you when your ads are about to play and you can even set how much warning you want. So I'm gonna set mine to 10 minutes. So 10 minutes before an ad plays, it will warn me. This means if I'm coming up to a big climax of my stream, I can click snooze and the ad break will be pushed back by a small amount. And I'll show you where to find the snooze button in a second. But before that, make sure you turn on the ad schedule and actually hit save. Once you've done that, go back to your stream manager, click edit stream manager and add the ad manager down here in the bottom right. This will allow you while you are live to see when ads are coming up from your stream dashboard. You'll also see the snooze button here, which is what I was just telling you about. And you can also change the length and also still run them manually with this button. Look, obviously ads still aren't perfect on Twitch and there is a long way for them to go before they can compete with something like YouTube's ads, which are targeted and skippable, mind you. But I love that they're giving me as a creator and you as a creator more control, more features and making it more accessible so that we don't have to worry as much. At the end of the day, that is still a massive win for everyone. Sorry for the long video. I do hope it helped. Comment down below. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious if you watched all the way to 100%. And hey, gonna throw it out there. Please go check out that YouTube Shorts channel. I'd love to know what you think about the shorts and if you want that video about them.